Yu-Gi-Oh! will never be the same after this. Supreme Darkness final reveals are being posted, and we now have the third Molcharmy card being announced. That is Molcharmy Nihalis, a level 4 Earth Beast, which like the other Molcharmies, can be activated if you control no cards as a quick effect by discarding it. Then each time your opponent summons a monster from the grave or banishment this time, you immediately draw one card. It shares all the other traits that the Molcharmies have, being that you can use one other Molcharmy this turn, and that at the end of the turn, you have to adjust your hand size if you have too many cards. So it's pretty straightforward. We now have the third Molcharmy to complement Perulia and Fuelos. And one could argue that this is the last Molcharmy that will come out, as what other special summons could you regulate? Perhaps summon tokens or summoning from the spell trap card zone? Because there really isn't much left. Now, before I get into my analysis of this card, and I guess the more overarching effect this has on the ecosystem that is a Yu-Gi-Oh! format, I'm curious what you guys think. Supreme Do oh! Ah! Ah! Mom! Log in! New Fuma loss just dropped! Now you guys can give me your preliminary thoughts now, and then after hearing what I said, maybe if your opinion changed, or you can let me know if you have any still contradicting opinions to something that I've said. But with that said, let's kind of talk about the immediate impact of Nihalis individually. So Nihalis is not going to be main deck worthy, at least not in every format. Unlike Fuelos, it's not going to be overbearing for pretty much every deck to play. And even that is de debatable with Fuelos. But like Perulia, there will be a lot of decks where Nihalis can be kind of tough to play against. Summoning from the Grave and Banishment have been very key parts of a lot of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, especially in modern era, where you could very feasibly do it several times per turn. And even some decks like Danger FTK would just do it in literal infinite number of times. And in those cases, for very obvious reasons, Moltrum Nihalis is a strong card. So you can only imagine that any single format where there's some graveyard or banished deck in existence, you can side this card in. Now, it obviously wouldn't be good going first, but really, people I, I've seen at least have underestimated the amount of special summons that happen from the grave in a typical deck. Like, look at a Fiends with Snake Eye deck from the deck that say I took to White to Sacramento not too long ago. That deck would summon from the graveyard and from the banishment a fair bit. Like we got Oak, we've got Engraver, we've got Locker Mother Fusion Monster, we've got Flame Birch, we've got Princess, you know, and that that is plenty of cards, right? Like if I'm going through my turn one, I'm going to have to omit some of those bodies, either to not make landfield as strong or to play around hand traps less effectively. Uh, or I'll have to give my opponents a lot of draws, the draws that truthfully I wouldn't have been willing to give. And this is going to be the case for a lot of different decks. Very few decks don't touch the graveyard. I mean, obviously that's why Shifter is such a good card. It, it hurts a lot of different decks. So yeah, I can very easily see Nihalis being a card that will have permeating effects throughout the rest of Yu-Gi-Oh! as any deck can side it in whenever a graveyard deck is in the meta, and that really isn't gonna be pretty often. But I think with the Molcharmies in general, there's something more interesting to talk about, and this isn't just confined to the single Nihalis here. But now that there are three Molcharmies in existence, think about it like this. A single person side deck could consist of nine max C equivalents. Now I know they're not the same as max C, but if they're good in a matchup, they are going to be at least ways of generating meaningful advantage to combat going second. And if you're playing a combo deck, a combo deck like Ubel, then you're gonna struggle versus literally all three of these cards. And that would deter a lot of combo decks from kind of existing. And that in theory should slow down the game a fair bit. Now, why would that be more meaningful than Maxi? So at least the thing with Maxi, and at least this is what I've noticed in the OCG from watching and the Master Duel from playing, with Maxi, there's only one Maxi. So it acts as a deterrent somewhat from some over the top decks, but a lot of decks, especially the ones that can fit in the non engine like Ash, Callby, and Crossout, will just say, hey, I have six ways to be Maxi, so on now you have to draw Maxi. And then even if you have Maxi, if I draw one of my six ways to stop it, it's not going to matter. And that's where we see Snake Eye still thriving, and a lot of decks in recent history do literally just that like you bell still very playable in master duel and that's really what it is in that format as well and that introduces a, a huge luck element in the game that is kind of unwanted but also what it does is it doesn't fully deter combo decks because you can't really rely on maxi that much to get there and you can comfortably come up with a counter plan but when there are nine cards being thrown at you the math 
get skewed heavily against you. For one, because not only can they draw one of these mulch armies now, but we're already seeing it with the six mulch armies now. Two will be dropped on you enough of the time. And even when you have call by and cross out or ash, like unless you have multiple of your own, you will feel the pressure. As well as with the split being over three different cards, cross out becomes significantly worse as you can't really side in three different one ups or you can, but I wouldn't advise it. It's it is particularly bricky. And when Fulos was announced, I kind of wondered if not that Maxi would say get banned, but say this would act as more copies of Maxi. So now it would be reliably happening every single game. And if every single game players had to play around Maxi because it was like a certainty that was going to happen, that would truly and fully dissuade some of the hyper combo decks that are kind of just toxic to play against. And while Maxi has other reasons for being a kind of wretch for the game, the mulch armies can't be used when you have a field state and aren't like entirely overbearing on the game. So I think this might actually shift the game into the better. Now, full loss, I was scared and still am a bit scared because that card's power level is a bit too high. I wish maybe Perilius at hand and deck and then Hugo Ross said extra deck only because I think that would maybe be a little bit more um, leveled out. But at least in the immediate TCG, we have seen a little bit of a heal. I'm obviously skeptical that it could just be a Band-Aid and then not everything is actually fixed yet. But with nine Mulch Armies now, perhaps we really do see combo decks kind of toned down and settled down. Now, that doesn't mean combo decks go away forever, right? So let's talk about what a combo deck has to do now in order to cope with the eventuality that Mulch Armies would be good. Now, the first thing is if combo decks fade from existence, Mulch Armies won't be worth side decking. Maybe just ones that are really important and then one or two to kind of even out some matchups. And then we're back to the point where there's only three full loss to deck and you can actually kind of play a tournament mathematically being in your favor to play around it, right? Say your favorite game one and then game three, you have cards to be full loss and they have to still draw it. And that's like the maxi challenge, right? Where sometimes it'll get your ass, but you'll be fine. Um, the other way that combo decks can exist is they have to take a different approach. They have to take the approach that they need to find ways to controllably stop and make half fields almost. And this is not that unusual for combo decks, right? We've seen some do it in the past and some of my favorite would be in tier elements because if you look at my tier decks from Mastral, the ones that I've always played, you go through any of my streams, my world championship deck lists, uh, but from both years, Ash Blossom, nowhere to be seen uh, because it's not like I'm scared of Maxi being used against me. Obviously, I don't want it to be used against me. It makes things harder, but there are ways for me to stop playing that still provide follow-up as well as disruption to make sure I'm not going to get my just shit pushed in because that's what happens if you pass in other decks. And Tyr isn't the only deck like that. Fire King is another one that's pretty similar. And that's partially why I played it for Wysis Niagara, right? I got Fuvalost and Perilliad a bunch. And unless two were used against me, I still felt rather in control when I started because at the cost of giving them two or three draws, which yes, is a fair bit, but not an egregious amount, I could set up a substantial level of both follow-up and interruptions. And even though the game might have to actually work for it, I could still win those games a fair bit of the time or most of the time, to be honest. And that's what I want in Yu-Gi-Oh, forcing me to play correctly and properly in a grind game. And yeah, I think that's over, overall good. I think that is how combo decks should have to interact with the metagame. That also means that combo decks can't just be ridden out of existence forever. They're not going to just go away. Now, ironically, both of those combo decks also are pretty good at playing during both players' turns to kind of offset Mulch Army's kind of Floodgate-esque effect. So I want to see if Konami will now push that design agenda any further. Maybe Tier was a step too far. I think Fire King could be a little better playing the opponent's turn if there's like another Kieran S card. Maybe I'm uh, pushing my tier level a little too much, but I think those type of cards make a lot more interactive game states as well as make the Mulch Armies not as much of a blowout versus combo. Maybe this is some more bias from my end here, not wanting combo decks to just kind of be wiped off the face of the earth, but it's not a matter of this card being broken. It's the numbers game. And mathematically, if you play a combo deck, at least in the immediate wake of Supreme Darkness, you are going to get Mulch Armied, and oftentimes two per turn. In fact, let's pull up a probability calculator quickly. So let's say our opponent is on a 40 card deck, and within their hand of five, let's see the odds of them drawing Max E. It would be a 33.75% chance, which you can see why this feels a little more like flipping coins and uh, a lot more luck based. But now what happens if we change it from Max E to the Mulch Armies we have six right now? The chance of drawing one or more copies goes up to 57%. Now in this format, there's a good chance you're going to get Mulch Army. Now, what if we change the number to nine? Now it goes up to 74%. 
If your deck struggles versus any one of these cards, and there is a 74% chance of one being dropped against you, your deck no longer seems viable. So you can see here how it makes a huge difference mathematically, right? And now you have to really rely on drawing your anti Moltres Army cards. But it gets worse, because that's just the odds of drawing one. What if you change the odds of drawing two? With the six Moltres Armies that exist now, there's about a 15.42% chance of that happening, drawing two or more. And those ones really hurt, because now you need multiple ways to stop it, or you have to stop on the spot, and you really need to half measure. And what happens when we add the three more Moltres Armies in? We're up to 31%. So pretty much the likeliness of you getting max seed in Mastodal is about the same as with the new Mulch Army, you getting double Mulch Army when there's nine in their deck. And if you've played versus Mulch Armies at all, you may know that if you're able to stop, take a half field accordingly, you can very comfortably win those games when they discard two cards, especially if um, your deck is built to handle that. These are kind of how... I can surmise my feelings and predictions with the Mulch Armies here. It's not a matter of this card being broken, it's the numbers game. And mathematically, if you play a combo deck, at least in the immediate wake of Supreme Darkness, you are going to get Mulch Armied, and oftentimes two per turn. And hopefully you got the idea of what I'm going at here, is these cards aren't maxi, but they fill a similar role, and more importantly, the map now drastically changes to the point that combo decks can't be so aggressive anymore. And I think that's a good thing. We'll see what happens though. Now there is one other kind of debate here. Um, and that's where does Maxi lie in this? Now, a lot of people argue that Fulos was the precursor for Maxi being banned in the OCG. It had just gone to two now with the newest ban list. And it seems like people maybe were right. But I wanna argue that it should actually indicate that maybe it's time for this card to come back. Because when you get Maxi in OCG or Master, one of the best ways to now fight back against it is to have your own Maxi. So I wouldn't mind if we're really embracing this type of gameplay to lean into it and go to 12 maxis. Now maxi is a bit kind of crazy in terms of power level, so maybe it's too much, but just a bit of a food for thought thing that I feel like is worthwhile because no matter what, I think with nine Mulch Armies in existence, unless it's a crazy meta call for the time because no one's playing them, no one can play hyper aggro combo decks. It's just not feasible. The game won't be the same unless these cards get hits or unless they print like effective, consistent counters to these cards. Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't think will really ever be the same. Uh, I'm curious what your whole thoughts are on the Mulch Armies as a whole archetype. If there's going to be any more, if you think Maxi should come back, if you think it's a precursor for the band, uh, if you think combo decks will go away, if you think they should design more decks like Tier and Fire, you can play your phone's turn. Many, many different design concepts are kind of in play here. And it's, it's, it's so cool because Yu-Gi-Oh! Is, is literally like a natural ecosystem where it's a bunch of different things hanging in the balance that can so easily be tipped off and implode. But I'm nerding out here. Anyways, that's all for now, guys. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.